Hello and welcome to all our guests, members of FI UK and members of Friends of FI in the US and everyone who's watching us in live streaming on Facebook. My name is Alessandra Varisco, International Fundraising and Development Manager at FI Fondo Ambiente Italiano, the National Trust for Italy, a non-profit organization which takes care of the invaluable heritage of Italy. There have been villas, castles, gardens, but also our landscape that is so distinctive and that is appreciated by so many people around the world. FI is about 45 years old, was founded following the example of the British National Trust to take care of special places for the benefit of present and future generations, promote education and love for Italian heritage, monitor the protection of landscape and natural assets. The foundation acquires sites by donation or bequest, but also manages properties that are given on concession by the state for us to restore and open to the public. In total, to take, today we take care of 66 properties, but we also organize national events to raise public's awareness about the importance of our cultural heritage. The incredible job that our foundation carries out is possible thanks to the help of over 200,000 members and 500 companies that each year join and donate for our projects. And it is no secret that many restorations are also possible thanks to people abroad who care about Italian heritage. That is so important to us that it is even more so in this very difficult year. Because of the pandemic, our properties were closed for several months and our events had fewer participants because of public restrictions. But we are facing an economic loss without precedence. So I would like to thank the many donors that I know are connected today and who have given generously. I invite you all to join and donate so that FI can continue its work. Any help you may give does make a difference. Now a few technical recommendations. Every event should last about 40, 45 minutes. There is a Q&A button uh, that you can use. We might not have the time to answer all your questions today, but be sure we will do so tomorrow or in the next few days. So this is the first event of what we call our Grand Tour Series, which involves our staff of architects, researchers, property managers, and gives us the opportunity to feel closer and overcome the distance imposed by this pandemic. It is a program of six webinars that will lead you to the discovery of many five properties so that you can enjoy our beautiful treasures without traveling, learn about five, and prepare for your next visit to Italy as soon as that is possible. But before starting with our topic today, I want to pass the camera on to Mr. William Parente, Chairman of FI UK. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you can see me. Thank you very much, Alessandra. For those of you who don't know, I have the honor to be the president of FI in the UK, and it's a great pleasure to be able to welcome you to this initiative which the FI team have so brilliantly organized. I very much hope you enjoy your virtual visit to Villa Balbianello and the Lake Villas of Northern Italy. As Alessandra has explained, FI is a remarkable organization, the custodian of some of Europe's greatest treasures, and it enjoys extraordinary support from the Italian people. Today's experience, which I hope will be an excellent experience, it's just a taste of the real thing. And of course, what we're really looking forward to is being able to welcome you and all our supporters to Italy in 2021. So I hope you enjoy the tour, and now I'll hand back to Alessandra. Thank you, Mr. Parente, for your words and enthusiasm for FI's work. So here we go with the Grand Tour visits to FI properties from the comfort of your sofa. And here's our theme song. So let's start our grand tour of five properties with the real star, Villa del Balbianello, situated on the west coast of Lake Como. It is one of the most beautiful villas of the lake. It's no secret. Let's see right away some images of this magnificent villa.
only by boat. Its beautiful garden has been the setting of several movies and people just love getting married here. Imagine that we already have reservations for 110 marriages next year. And together with Villa Neki Campiglio, which we will see uh, during another event, it is the most visited Phi property by foreigners. Last year, around 70% of its visitors were foreigners, in fact. Its position and its gardens make it one of the most spectacular estates in the area, and the loggia offers the visitors a panoramic view of the lake on both sides. This elegant, romantic 18th century mansion and its magnificent garden were bequeathed to Fai by Guido Monzino to be sure that it would stay forever as it is. But who was Guido Monzino? He was a famous explorer, the first Italian to climb Mount Everest. He was also an entrepreneur, a collector, and a, a passionate traveler. In accordance to his wishes, Fai has been managing the villa since 1988 preserving what we call the spirit of the place. And now I have the pleasure of introducing my colleague and friend, Lucia Borromeo, our finest researcher, who has worked on the history of this villa for several years and who's the author of its guidebook. Lucia, are you connected? Yes, I am. Do you hear hey, me? Welcome. Do, do, do you see me also? I do not see you. No, so, so neither are I. Here, sorry. here you are. Here you are. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello everybody. Uh, sorry for this delay. Here we so are. My first question. I, yes. will, I will ask you some questions. My first question to you, Lucia, is who thought of building such a breathtaking villa with such a fantastic view? Oh, well, it was a man of church, a cardinal, Cardinal Dorini, who, strangely enough, had another beautiful villa just two minutes away from Balbianello, and it was called Balbiano. And this is why he wanted a new spot uh, on the lake where to enjoy a double view on the lake. And so he had this new loggia built for him and for his uh, little group of friends, uh, a, a sort of a cultural club he had. And uh, he, um, he had this uh, um, spot on the lake where an ancient convent was. And he uh, had this loggia added so that he could go there with his friends and uh, talk about uh, literature, history, culture, enjoy the view and uh, sip coffee altogether. We can say it was a, a a coffee lodge. So, uh, but uh, did the villa always stay in the Durini family? Oh, actually, no. This all happened at the end of the 18th century. And when the cardinal died in those years, uh, the villa passed by uh, Capsaveral owners until it arrived into the Arconati Visconti family. And we can still see their um, mark on the villa because on the top of the loggia, they wanted their coat of arm to be inscribed, to be built. And uh, so they lived in the villa in the 19th century. Here is the Marquise Arconati Visconti and she set the house inside with the furniture that was fashionable at that time in the 19th century. Um, later on she left, the, she, uh, she, she abandoned Italy and the villa was abandoned and so at the beginning of the 20th century the villa looked more or less like this and uh, a new um, character came out. He was an American general who came to the lake uh, for vacation and fell in love with Barbianello. So for 20 years, can you imagine, it took 20 years to, to him to, to get this villa from the Marquis because uh, World War I um, just uh, uh, didn't let him buy it during those years. But at last, in 1922, the um, Ames family uh, could get their new villa. And this is what the, in the, the rooms looked like during their stay. They, they stayed in the villa until uh, 1954, when the general died. They certainly had a very good time there. And among the, their 
our guests, we can mention Mary Pickford, who was uh, the partner of Charlie Chaplin in a movie company, the United Artists. They founded it together. And also, to come to a more recent time, the name of Jacqueline Kennedy. So, but the villa, in fact, was bequeathed to Fi by Count Guido Monzino, as I said, an explorer. Now, I know you have many pictures of him during his expeditions, his famous expeditions. Oh, yes, Did sure. We have have. Some of them. Yes, he, he left a wonderful archives. Here he is with his uh, beloved mountains and uh, in one of his excursions. Uh, one of the mo he, was a, he was a man of uh, finance. Uh, he, uh, he, he, was a man of, uh, he was a chief of industry, but his uh, true love and passion was a uh, geographical expedition. He organized 21 very important expeditions all over the world. And thanks to him, the Italian flag was brought for the first time in history to the North Pole in 1971. Um, this is the little museum he, he created by himself inside Villa Balbianello and with all the memories of his excursions and at the very center you can see the famous ledge with which he arrived, he reached the North Pole in 1971. Uh, this was the whole group of people. It was a huge um, enterprise. Uh, it took 25 sledges uh, dragged by 300 sledge dogs and there were 25 Inuit guides and certainly the, the climate was not uh, a, a very easy one as you can see from this picture and the equipment, the equipment was also quite primitive uh, uh, look, looked from, from our days, it, it, still with the traditional fur coats, it was not technical as it would be now. And in the museum you can also see more than 300 little sculptures made by the Inuit people and donated to Monzino as a present. And so beyond these 300 statues, are there other objects um, that you catalogued uh, in the villa? Oh yes, it, it took took more than uh, one year, uh, cataloging uh, oh, more than uh, 2,000 objects. Uh, there was, uh, among all the others, uh, I just point out the collection of uh, prints about with the um, landscape of the Como Lake. And there is also an important collection of ethnic art uh, with uh, African uh, little sculptures and also Mesoamerican pieces, Mayan pieces. And this one in particular it's an interesting scene. You can see uh, an old man embracing a young uh, lady, a younger woman, and with his uh, left hand, he's raising her little skirt. So we, maybe it's a habit that it is uh, timeless, as we can see still nowadays, this kind of passion. And uh, going on, we can see Monzino's personal uh, uh, bedroom with the French um, furniture, as this one, but there is also a good number of uh, English uh, beautiful uh, furniture. And uh, carpets, carpets are very selected, uh, high quality carpets, mostly coming from India or uh, from Persia and China. And this is his bathroom in a sort of neo-Pompeian style. And uh, the dining room with, of course, the silverware and uh, French, important French tapestries. And there are two great salons and both are um, paneled with the paneling coming from French uh, 18th century castles. And uh, in these um, rooms, you can see the collection of uh, Chinese uh, uh, sculptures dating back to the Tang period. Here are four uh, lady musicians but there are also two more sportive ladies, uh, riding horses and playing polo. <laughs> so we can really say that uh, Munzino has left his own signature after the Arconati Visconti. He wanted his coat of arm to be inserted on the entrance of the villa, which can still be seen today. So... Um... I have a few more questions. Guido Monzino, we know, kept his villa and the garden in an absolutely 
perfect state. And his wish uh, when he left this villa to Fai was that uh, it, would it would be like this forever. So to give you, to give our guests an idea uh, of uh, the cost of pure ordinary maintenance amounts to over 300,000 euros per year. But in practical terms, Lucia, can you help me describe what, does, what that means? What kind of maintenance are we talking about? Yes, uh, the work is never finished. Every day there's something new to do or something regular to keep doing. Uh, just to have an idea of the dimension, this is the plan of the gardens with the buildings. There are three buildings and maintenance is... Uh, kept every day. Just the pruning of the plants is very uh, exacting and demanding. And for example, this wonderful, enormous tree has to, has to maintain this uh, umbrella shape um, following Monzino's directions. And so we have two uh, acrobatic gardeners. They are free climbers who are in, um, in charge of the pruning of this uh, particular uh, tree. But also the snow can uh, bring damages, can, 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 can make some damages. So we have, for, for example, to, we had to restore the statues and the balustrade of the balcony, but also in, the, in their collection, the little sculptures, uh, the textiles, the carpets, and of course, also the tapestries. So I, I mentioned earlier uh, that some movies were shot here. Which ones were they? And do you have any anecdotes or any picture of these movies? Oh, it was, a, it was a, an amusing time when we had these movies. Um, there was uh, the shooting of Casino Royale. Casino Royale, and also Star Wars, because uh, George Lucas came to the lake and really liked this villa and wanted the episode two, uh, the attack uh, of the clones, to be partially uh, shot here. Here we have an image of the two main characters um, who will get married at Balbianello, according to the story. And again, a romantic view of the two of them at the balcony and a more uh, robotic uh, scene uh, always by the balcony. And there was also an, uh, an English movie by John Irving was shot here. The name is A Month by the Lake. And uh, at, at, uh, for Star Wars, um, actually the... Uh, the graphic uh, way that the villa was represented was quite different. This is how the villa looks in the movie. And uh, strangely enough, they rented uh, for the movie, they rented this uh, room, which has a spectacular view on the lake, but uh, they completely covered it so that you don't even see that there, were, there are windows. And they transformed it into a bedroom with a fake fireplace. And so you really don't understand that you actually are at Balbianello and on the lake. But I think this is cinema and this is why we like it. And uh, this is also a movie which was uh, shot at Balbianello, uh, but this is another story. Yes, well, this photo uh, is an introduction actually to our next villa, because from a jet set lake like Le Como, we travel now on our sofa to a totally different one. A quiet and remote corner between Italy and Switzerland, Lake Lugano, where we visit Villa Fogazzaro Roy. And here's our short video.
So facing out over the Italian shore of Lake Lugano, Villa Fogazzaro Roy conserves the books and mementos of the novelist Antonio Fogazzaro. It was here that he both wrote and set his masterpiece Piccolo Mondo Antico, translated into English as The Little World of the Past. This house was reimagined by the author as a place of the soul and represented a quiet, secluded refuge in which to spend the summer with friends, fishing and sailing around the lake. So let's ask Lucia some questions about this villa. Let's go back to the picture you left us with. And was that Villa Barbianello or Villa Fogazzaro? Ah, here we are. So this is the private dock of Villa Barbianello, but the scene is taken from the movie Little World of the Past. So the rest of the film is shot at Villa Fogazzaro. And to understand the, um, how these two lakes are set uh, close to each other, we, let's have a look at the map of Italy. And you can see that in the northern part, uh, there are the two lakes. This is uh, the Como Lake, and Lugano one. So here they are in more detailed image and the red spot is the Villa del Barbianello, the one we have just seen on Como Lake. And now we are going to see Villa Fogazzaro just nearby on the Italian part of the Swiss Lugano Lake. So tell us Lucia, why is this villa so well known? Uh, it's strange because it's not a monumental site as we have seen uh, at Balbianello. It's just a private uh, uh, house. But uh, first of all, it is set in a wonderful landscape which has remained exactly the same as it was more than a hundred years ago. This is a, an historical picture and it's exactly the same as what you can see today. So just breathing this uh, timeless place, it's something special and then it's the house itself because it was the house of one of Italian greatest writers Antonio Fogazzaro everybody has studied Fogazzaro at school everybody had to read a little the little world of the past and uh, which is a nice story it's still readable nowadays uh, it's about uh, a marriage between a noble and a poor girl and uh, in with the background of the Italian battles for independence so there are many important themes and it's a it's it's a nice lecture. And so many people come to see uh, where Fogazzaro lived, but also where, where the two characters lived, because um, the, the sitting room, for example, that you can see today is very similar to the sitting room that could have been lived by the two characters, as we can see in this uh, uh, scene taken from uh, the movie, which was uh, uh, shot in 1941. And um, many things of Fogazzaro uh, still are on the, play, on the spot, uh, still are preserved there. For example, his own studio study, the room, with all his pictures and books and memories, but it's especially with his writing desk, which is a very special item because uh, Fogazzaro used to write his impression, his feelings, not on a notebook, but on the drawer. And we still had the original drawer where he um, inserted all his uh, um, filling and notes. And one of the most moving is the one uh, this, uh, that you can see in the center uh, with the name Mariano, because Mariano was his only uh, male son uh, who uh, tragically died at the age of 20. So it was a, a terrible uh, moment that uh, um, Fogazzaro had to uh, undergo. And it, it is uh, recorded on this draw, special drawer and uh, the two of them had a very special uh, relationship, of course. And uh, we can see the two of them uh, uh, looking at the lake on the little terrace of the house. And uh, everything has been maintained as it was in this picture. For example, if you have a look at the central table and you, uh, next time you go to Villa Fogazzaro, you will see exactly the same table. So um, it really, you feel like uh, uh, moving and, and uh, breathing inside a, a literature house. 
So uh, was it uh, someone from the Fogazzaro family who donated this villa to Fai? Yes, exactly. The villa remained uh, in, in the Fogazzaro family forever until Fai arrived. And the donor is uh, Mar Marquise uh, um, Giuseppe Roy. He uh, was born in Vicenza, like in the Veneto region, like Fogazzaro. And he was the grandson of uh, um, Fogazzaro's daughter, um, Gina. Uh, so the the whole family is recomposed somehow in this villa. Um, so did Marquis Roy um, make some changes or make uh, any additions to the villa? Was he a collector? Or was he uh, what was he passionate about? Well, the, there are two aspects. On the one hand, he tried to maintain. Uh, as much as possible of Fogazzaro's memories. So uh, the original books uh, or the writers are still um, in the villa and, uh, and many other um, memories and uh, personal objects. And on, for example, the patriotic Italian lyre that uh, we printed uh, during our revolution period in 1848. And uh, then there are some important rooms such as the Napoleon room where um, Roy inserted this, uh, his collection of uh, Napoleonic uh, prints. And um, he also was a very competent collector of China. Uh, there are beautiful porcelain, mostly coming from Venice uh, or the Veneto region, sorry, or from uh, Florence, from Doccia in Florence. And um, you can find China almost in almost every room. But uh, he also had a passion for uh, special extravagant objects. For example, in this uh, gallery, you can see uh, a small group of coconuts. Uh, which were in carved uh, in, um, in the South, in South America or, or Central America and which were meant to contain gunpowder. And so this was the kind of things that attracted his attention. For example, uh, samples, you know, samplers were uh, this uh, exercise that young lady had to do to train their, um, their the way of embroidering, of making laces. And uh, on also he, of course, he furnished part of the house with uh, modern taste, uh, modern dating back to 1960s, where when he was very active in the house. This is one of the uh, bathroom he he settled, and uh, of course, also he uh, we we can see also the dining room with uh, with the, the table and all the the, the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> so. This table, gosh, this is so elegantly set. Is it so in every Phi property? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is exactly the table set as Marquis Roy wanted. He was very precise and uh, um, this is what the room would have liked without his passage. And uh, in, uh, in his will, where, where he mentioned the donation to Fai, he also wrote uh, pages about how to um, set the table, mentioning two uh, spoons, two forks, two knives, four glasses. So we, when we set the table, we, we take a, a meter and we measure the distance between the center of one dish to the other. So he was very meticulous and um, also he um, really gave instruction of how to prepare a, to, uh, to create a plaque uh, an inscription uh, that had to, has to be put outside of the house uh, to remember Antonio Fogazzaro and his donation. And he also, he was so fussy that he also decided what kind of lettering we had to use. And I must say that Fai uh, is, uh, is very good at obeying these uh, desires of the donors. And we really realized the perfect plague he, he would have liked us to to make with the right lettering and uh, it still can be seen um, by all visitors so 
uh, whenever you will come, we'll have uh, the occasion of coming to visit the house. You will see the house, Pogazzaro's house, uh, and Marquis um, Roy uh, Passage, uh, this lake, and the beautiful, enjoy the beautiful view of the lake. So I really hope you will have uh, the chance of seeing it, and I uh, uh, hope I will see you soon. Uh, I will see you soon here and thank you for all the listening and thank you to all participants and thank you Alessandra. Well thank you Lucia for these guided tours in two amazing uh, villas on the lakes of northern Italy. Uh, we will have the pleasure of uh, having Lucia's company also in another event dedicated to art collections on November 17. Now I would like to ask Amanda Kuttner, Executive Director of Friends of Fine New York to also add a few words. Amanda. Thanks, Alessandra. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to thank you all for joining us on our, our first virtual visit. Uh, it's so lovely to be able to engage with you all and, and share our love for Italy, even if it's not possible for many of us to go there right now. Um, for those of you who are members, thank you. Uh, your support and friendship are are so appreciated and we're so grateful to have such wonderful and enthusiastic supporters. Um, this has been a difficult year for everyone all over the world and organizations like FI and Friends of FI are no exception. And it's thanks to your continued support that we are able to persevere and continue the work that we're doing um, for Italy. And for those of you who aren't members, you know, join us. If, if you're in the USA, gifts to Friends of Phi are tax deductible. Uh, we encourage you to get involved and when circumstances permit, hopefully soon, to um, experience these properties in person. Um, in the meantime, I hope to see you guys at our next virtual visit. And thanks again for tuning in. Well, thank you, Amanda. Uh, so I um, see that we have a few more minutes. Uh, so uh, I wanted, I see many questions uh, coming up. Um, maybe I can answer a couple. And one is, uh, in part, Amanda has answered, uh, but I want to give a more comprehensive answer. Uh, how can one help FI from abroad? So uh, you can help by joining, joining FI UK, if you are in, in the UK, um, joining Friends of Five, if you are in the US, uh, joining our community, donating for specific projects, uh, do help us save beautiful treasures for every, everyone to enjoy today and for many years to come. As Amanda said, donations uh, to Friends of Five, but also to Five UK are tax deductible. And uh, you can learn more uh, on fiuk.org and friendsoffi.org. Uh, you also can help by visiting our properties as soon as that is possible, hiring a venue for uh, your special event, uh, that being corporate or uh, private. Uh, you can learn more about FI properties on fondoambiente.it slash visit FI. Uh, and uh, you can also learn about the many, many events that we organize in our properties so that we can uh, have the public come in and enjoy these special places. They are not closed museums. They are uh, properties um, open for everybody to enjoy. And uh, this other question that I want to answer is, are properties open now? Yes, they are. Um, they have been closed for a few months in the spring, for three months, uh, but they are now open since the end of May. And it is important to reserve your visit online uh, so that we can uh, help us um, respect the social distancing measures. And that's for everybody's safety, for visitor safety, but also for our personnel. So now we've come to the end of uh, our event. Uh, there are more questions which we will answer uh, directly. Uh, leave us your email, write to us, international, dot, um, international at fondambiente.it or info at fiuk.org or info at friendsoffi.org. 
We are looking forward to seeing you on our next visit entitled Landscape Properties, Nature and Landscape in 50 Shades of Green with property manager Giorgia Montesano from Parco Villa Gregoriana in Tivoli, near Rome. We will also visit some other natural sites that have attracted so many visitors in this particular year. We will discover what type of events uh, that were organized in these properties to welcome visitors who were looking for opportunities to be in the open air, yet enjoy our cultural heritage. I want to thank you all for attending and staying with us. Depending on where you are, I wish you all a good afternoon or a good evening. Goodbye.